This slide presentation presents an overview of testing reported by the University of Texas at Austin. The testing and subsequent report were part of a Texas DOT study looking at the performance of geogrids and geotextiles for stabilization of flexible pavements over expansive soils. As part of this project, the Center for Transportation Research at the University of Texas monitored 80 experimental pavement sections. Monitoring of the pavements showed that stabilization with geosynthetics significantly improved the performance of the test sections. Monitoring also looked at physical property comparisons of the different geosynthetics and their abilities to confine and interact with base aggregate. Testing found that physical properties like tensile strength had no correlation to performance in this application. Testing also demonstrated that all triax geogrids tested performed considerably better than the other biaxial geogrids and geosynthetics tested. The following slides will provide more detail into this testing. Expansive soils, also called swelling soils, are found in many parts of the world. These soils contain clay minerals that attract and absorb water, causing them to swell. This swelling is often referred to as heaving. When the soils dry out, they shrink and crack. This shrinking and swelling cause significant problems to structures. In the United States, damage from expansive soils on pavements, foundations, and other structures are estimated in the tens of billions. Many large cities and transportation routes are founded on these deposits. The map on this slide shows where many of these expansive soils can be found in the United States. Areas of blue and red have significant swelling potential. To better understand and predict how geosynthetics perform in pavement structures constructed over expansive soils, Texas DOT commissioned the Center for Transportation Research at the University of Texas to develop a monitoring program of pavement sections and compare the results to a new testing device currently in development. This short video explains a little about the purpose and benefit of this testing. In Texas, we have been using geosynthetic reinforcements to mitigate the problems associated with expansive clay. Expansive soils damage our highways, and the use of geosynthetic reinforced base courses over expansive clays will save us a significant amount of money. The idea is that the development of these longitudinal cracks will be significantly minimized or eliminated if you do use a geosynthetic reinforcement in the base. The challenge was to quantify those parameters that contributed to the improvement and fortunately that was achieved with this research. Essentially what we did is to develop a testing, a testing procedure to characterize the properties not of the geosynthetic alone. What you need to characterize is the composite, the composite that comes from having the geosynthetic under the confinement of soil. So the property that we developed is the stiffness stiffness of the soil geosynthetic composite and what we're going to test in this pull-out device is also an expeditious way to characterize the stiffness not of the geosynthetic in its, by itself but the stiffness of the composite of the geosynthetic under the confinement of soil. What the, this pull-out device does is it puts, a, puts it under the confinement of soil as it is going to be in the field and then tensions it. And when you try to pull out this geosynthetic layer out of the confinement, out, or out of this sandwich of confining soil, is when you're really going to characterize how stiff this composite is. And this is the property that you need to distinguish between geosynthetics that will work and those that potentially will not. The end goal of this is to give TextDot the property that is the right property to specify geosynthetics in your next pavement project. One significant benefit to TxDOT is cost savings. The program developed was basically broken down into two segments. The first was the field test section performance review. This consisted of compiling the test sections and then gathering performance data on these sections by performing visual condition surveys, total station surveys, and using the Texas DOT Pavement Management Information System database. The second segment consisted of laboratory testing. In this segment, 15 different geosynthetics by seven manufacturers were tested using the device outlined in the video. Products tested included three woven geotextiles, three integrally formed geogrids, five woven or laser bonded geogrids, 
and four geogrids with high aspect triangular apertures. Pavement sections monitored consisted of 80 test sections spread out over 10 different projects. The map on the right shows approximate locations for these sites. These sites were selected to provide observations over varying degrees of traffic as well as a wide range of soil properties. All subgrade soils were classified as CL or CH according to the USCS classification, and plasticity values for these soils range from 20 to 60. These expansive soils cause unique stresses in pavements. As mentioned previously, expansive soils expand and shrink based on moisture. During wet times, moisture collects and can penetrate easier at the edge of a pavement, causing the subgrade soils to swell. During dry times, the edge of a pavement can dry out, causing the subgrade soils to shrink. In all of this, the center of the road may only experience minor changes in moisture. The diagram on this slide, taken from the report, diagrams this well. The differentials in shrinking and swelling across the pavement creates points of increasing high tensile and compressive stresses. The performance of the test sections were closely monitored as mentioned earlier. Visual condition surveys were conducted that observed rutting, alligator, block, and longitudinal and transverse cracking. Also patching, raveling, flushing, and other failures were noted. The use of the total station surveys allowed for the monitoring of vertical deformation over time across the test sections. The Texas DOT PMIS database provided data on visual stress, ride quality, rutting data, deflection, and skid resistance. Results from the field testing showed significant benefit when using geosynthetics to stabilize expansive soils. When broken down further, it was found that geogrids with triangular openings performed comparatively better than those stabilized with traditional biaxial geogrids or fabric. It was also observed that the triangular geogrids with higher rib depths, specifically Triax TX5 and Triax TX7, had the best performance. The chart shown on the bottom of this slide outlines the performance found after evaluating the 80 field test sections. The general scale rates performance from excellent on the far left to poor on the far right. All Triax products perform very good to excellent in the field testing. There were several key observations made during the field monitoring. In this presentation, we will just go through a few of these, but please reference the report for more details. On the farm to market road FM 1774, two geogrid stabilized sections had been built, one containing Tensar's BX1100 and another biaxial product with a different manufacturing process. This product consisted of polypropylene straps that were laser welded together at the junctions. During the summer of 2014, longitudinal cracks were found in the section containing the other BX geogrid. On excavating the cracked road section, it was observed that there was no longer a bond between the longitudinal and transverse elements of the geogrid. The laser welded junctions were not holding up. This section continued to show poor performance. The previous slide is a good transition into this slide. The attached table is taken from the report. I apologize that the type is so small, but please feel free to reference the actual chart in the report. What this table outlines are many of the physical properties for the different products tested. As found on the previous slide, there is much more than tensile strength involved in stabilizing a road. The product composed of laser welded strips had a much higher tensile modulus than Tensar's BX1100 product, but the performance was significantly poorer. This report goes further to state, that the in-isolation physical properties of geosynthetics, meaning that product-specific tests such as tensile modulus or ultimate tensile strength, did not correlate to the actual field performance. To measure performance, composite testing consisting of aggregate and geosynthetic needs to be performed. Also, properly monitored in-ground testing is needed to confirm performance. The second phase of testing consisted of laboratory testing at the Center of Transportation Research. As mentioned in the video several slides back, this testing consisted of embedding geosynthetic products into a consistent soil matrix under a realistic confining pressure and measuring the stiffness of the soil geosynthetic composite. This process has been developed by the Center of Transportation and is continuing to go through refinements to compare the results to actual field monitoring. In this round of testing, 15 different geosynthetics were tested. Several different geotextiles were tested along with eight biaxial geogrids, three integrally formed and five either woven or laser bonded, and four triax geogrids were tested. 
Once the different products were tested under the confinement of soil and the values of the stiffness of the soil geosynthetic composite were determined, these values were compared to how the products actually performed in the field. This process of comparing actual field results to laboratory testing should be performed on all new products. It will keep performance as the target and will help improve and validate the model. Also, this testing currently only applies to the use of geosynthetics over expansive soils and does not apply currently to structural calculations. Proper evaluation of the structural contribution of the geosynthetics requires significant testing, validation, and expert peer review. Once soil geosynthetic stiffness values were established, these values were compared to the actual field results as mentioned in the previous slide. The stiffness values can be seen in the row at the bottom of this table. They range from a stiffness value of 32.7 for Triax TX7 down to 9.6 for the 10X MS1110 product. The values lined up very well with the actual field testing results. This recent field and laboratory testing, monitoring over 80 test sections, is a significant research endeavor and provides good data on the benefits of using geosynthetics in pavements underlain by expansive soils. The testing also differentiates between products and performance, again showing that simply measuring in-air geosynthetic properties such as tensile strength or modulus is not an accurate approach for predicting performance. In summary, tensile triax geogrids performed from very good to excellent. Their superior ability to interlock, confine, and stabilize pavements provides benefits to roadway owners and builders. If you would like more information on this study, or would like help looking at a project, please feel free to reach out to your local Tensar Regional Sales Manager, contact us on our website, or give us a call at 1-800-TENSAR-1. Thank you.